open class. My name is Andrea Hayfley and I'm an Ophia ambassador and I'd like to welcome you, my assistant, Petey. Thank you. Today is week two, lesson two out of four. The title of this lesson is called Receiving in an Object, Tricks and Tips. First, let's go over the safety requirements. Number one, make sure the space where today's movement is to take place is large enough for the number of learners. If there is one learner, you don't need a lot of space. However, if there are more learners, make sure the space is large enough. Step two, make sure the space is also free of obstacles. So behind me, I cleared all of the furniture so that it is safe to play. Step three, make sure the space where you are playing is safe enough for playing on the surface. So what we've done in our home is we took off our socks so we don't slip. If you're going to play outside, make sure you are wearing running shoes. The learning goal for today's lesson is, we are learning to send and receive objects alone and or with others in a variety of ways. For our primary learners, the game is adapted from Ophia's Health and Physical Education Curriculum Resource, Grade 2, Sending and Receiving at Different Speeds, Levels and Distances. Here's the equipment you'll need for this game. One object that you can safely send and receive, and also something where you can mark the throwing line and also the receiving line. So you can find tape. What I've done is I like to use a towel rolled up, or you can even use hands to mark the lines, okay? To set up the game, I'm gonna use the towel or the throwing line, and then I use the cans to mark the different distances of where I will receive the object. Here's how you play. If you are alone, you are going to roll the object at the throwing line, and then you're going to turn around and receive it at the first marked distance, so the first can. So as you can see, what Petey has done, he was rolling the object and he turned around and received the object at the first can. Petey, can you show us at the second can? So he's gonna bend down, roll the object, turn around and receive it, reach out and catch it in. Can you do it to the third marked distance? He's going to roll, turn and receive. Thank you. So here are your look fors for today. For sending the object, make sure your eyes are on the target. So here the target is at the different distances. Two, your body is facing the target. And three, you're following through in your role. For the look force for receiving the object, your eyes are on the object. So at this game, you're going to have your eyes on the ball. Then you're gonna receive the object by having your hands out and then bringing it to your body. I'm gonna show you how to play the same game, but with another learner. So. Petey's going to be the one at the sending line, so at the towel, but this time he's gonna do an underhand throw. He's gonna throw the ball, and I'm gonna receive it at the first mark distance. And when I'm catching, I'm gonna have my hands out and bring the object to my body. So watch. Petey, you're gonna send the object, and I'm going to receive it. We're gonna switch spots. I'm gonna send the object, he's gonna receive it. Now we're going to go to the second mark distance. He's gonna send, I'm gonna receive, I'm gonna switch spots, send and receive. I'm gonna to go to the third mark distance, send and receive. Third mark distance, send and receive. Thank you. Here is an extension for this game. I went around my home and I found a bucket. Try receiving the object by using the bucket to catch the ball. So I'll show you from the third marked distance. Petey's gonna stand at the throwing line. He's going to send the object and I'm going to receive it. We can switch spots. Ready? I'm gonna send the object and he's gonna receive it. Thank you. Here's the game for our junior learners. It's focusing on sending an object to a target. This game is a progression from last week's target game. It's adapted from Ophia's Health and Physical Education Curriculum Resources, Grade 5, Pylon Power. 
Here's the equipment you will need. A variety of objects that you can send. I've got a bouncy ball, a large stuffed animal, a smaller stuffed animal, a rolled up sock, and a squishier ball. You'll also need a variety of buckets. I chose a small bucket and I labeled it five points. I chose a laundry hamper, labeled it 10 points. And an even larger bucket, I labeled it 15 points. You're going to spread out the buckets accordingly. And then you'll also need a throwing line. And once again, I've used my rolled up towel. You can also use tape too. Here's how you play with one learner. You're going to gather the five objects and place it at the throwing line. The learner is going to choose the way to send the object and the target they are going to send to. So, PD, you chose the bouncy ball. Which way are you going to send the ball? Both hands. Both hands. And you're going to send it to which target? 15. 15. Go ahead. You got it in. 15 points. He's going to choose a softer ball. Which target? 15. 15 with two hands. Awesome. He chose the stop. Overhand throw to which target? 15. He got it in. Overhand 15. Overhand 15. Awesome. Can you try the larger stuffy? Uh, and which bucket? Uh, Choosing 15. 15 points. He's going to take the risk. So close. Thank you, PD. Come on over. So, there's a bit of strategy to this target game. Knowing your ability and choosing the object you are most successful at sending to the target of choice. Here are the look fors. Aiming at the target and also choosing the way to send the object with accuracy. To play this game with someone else, you can each take turns by sending the object and we'll show you to the appropriate target. So, PD, come on over. Choose an object that you're going to throw. Um, the bear. And I'm going to choose the larger stuffy. Go ahead, he's gonna go first. 15. You got 15 points in the larger. I'm gonna choose the smaller bucket with an underhand throw. I got 10 points. Here's a fun extension to this game. If you have objects that bounce, you can actually send by bouncing the ball first and see if you can actually get it into the bucket. So I'm looking for a bounce on the ground or the floor and then into the bucket. I'll show you. I'm standing at the throwing line. I'm gonna bounce the ball and I'm gonna see if I can get it into the 10 point basket. Bounce. Oh, so close. Try it and let us how it goes. Here's the game for our intermediate learners. It is focused on sending an object to a target. This game is a progression from last week's target game. Today's game is adapted from Ophia's PlaySport resource. The game is called Pinwheel. Here's the equipment that you will need. To set up the game, you will need a piece of tape or a rolled up towel to create a throwing line. And then you'll need something to create a tic-tac-toe grid. What I've used is rolled up towels to create our tic-tac-toe grid. Then you will need some objects that you can send. You can use small stuffed animals or you can use rolled up socks. So to play this game alone, PD is sent, standing at the sending line, throwing line, and he's going to send his three objects one at a time. PD is going to send the object by using an underhand throw. And the object of the game is to create a line going horizontal, vertical, or diagonal on the tic-tac-toe grid. Only one object is allowed in each square. Go ahead. He got it in the top part of the grid. Oh, so right now there are two objects in the top, so one of them does not count. So go ahead, you can have another throw. He's got it in the middle. And he's got it in the bottom. There you go. He's got three in a row. So, the look for for this game is aim and accuracy. To play this game with someone else, you're going to have to find objects that are distinct from another. So, Petey's going to use the stuffed animals. 
and I'm going to use the socks. We're each going to take turns sending the object to the grid. Only one object is allowed in each square. If the object lands out of the tic-tac-toe grid, it does not count and you have lost your turn. So, we'll show you. Edie, here's your stuffed animals. And I'm gonna use the socks. He's gonna go first. He's got it in the grid. I'm gonna try for the middle square. Oh, I got the bottom square. He's got it in the middle of the square. I'm gonna see if I can block him. Oh, I blocked him. <laughs> Up oh, out of the grid. He's lost his turn for that one. I'll see if I can try for the bottom. There we go. Let's see if you can block me. Go ahead. There you go. He's blocked me. So this game can continue. There's a lot of strategy to this game. Choosing the object that you're most successful at sending and even focusing on aim and accuracy to either block your opponent and even Attempting to score three in a row. Here are some extensions. Try throwing with your non-dominant hand. Even increasing or decreasing the distance to make it easier or more challenging. Don't forget the look for us, aim and accuracy. Let's talk about accommodations and modifications. Accommodations are adding supports to the game to help the learner be successful. This could be changing the object and making it bigger or smaller. It could be changing the target you are sending the object to. Or could it even be the distance from where you are sending the object to where the target is at. Modifications are changing the expectations in the game to meet the learner's needs. So, if the learner has challenges with gross motor and fine motor skills, Instead of sending the object, I would change the expectation to just holding the object and dropping it into a bucket. Another modification you can add is if the learner is having a hard time receiving the object, I would change the expectation where the learner just has to hold the object for a set amount of time. Please feel free to add accommodations and or modifications to your game to help the learner be successful. Here are your guiding questions for the primary, junior, and intermediate learners. I want you to think about the connection between how you are thinking and feeling before, during, and after the games. Question number one. Which object was easier or more challenging to send to the target and why? Question number two. How did you feel when you were successful at sending and or receiving? Were there any strategies that you came up with to help improve your sending or receiving? Question number three. Describe how your body parts were moving when sending and or receiving. Question number four. How did your sending or receiving change as the distance changed, the target changed, or even when the object changed? Don't forget to share your learning. Thank you for joining us in our OFIA open class.